Achtung, Achtung, hier ist Alex Wright and you are listening to Chat Grabble and Cheat Pops with JB and Chris Dredd. Enjoy it or I come over and kick your ass. Welcome everyone to a very special edition of Chat Grapple and Cheat Pops with me, JB, the best Chris in all of wrestling podcast hosting. It's Chris Dredd and our wonderful special guest today. Thank you so much for taking your time out of training newbies at the Nightmare Factory. It, it's getting really cold in here, as you can see. It is <laughs> WCW's Glacier, AK, or Ray Lloyd. Thank you so much for joining us. We're so oh, happy to have you on. Thank you, JB. Thank you, Chris. It's a pleasure, man. Pleasure to be here. Man, it's um, it's great to have you on. You know, you're you're one of the guys that when we started the podcast, we uh, for whatever reason I don't know why we just like we need to get Glacier on, like we need to get Ray Lloyd on, like we need to speak <laughs> to you because, you know, we're massive WCW marks, but we uh. also realised that the company at the time you were there was in like a bit of a transitional period. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. There was a lot of crazy stuff going on backstage, and also we had Sonny Ono on as well, and we know you know. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> we speak to you about Sonny too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, you know, um, uh, the, the great thing about it though, you know, one of the things that I always look back on because I'm, you know, I, uh, you know, DDP is, is you know, has been a big influence in my career personally and professionally. And, and we, and, you know, I, I always call Dallas kind of like my crazy big brother, you know, and, and uh, but, um, uh, you know, Dallas, uh, I moved to, I broke into wrestling in, in April of, of 1987. So uh, just a couple of months, I celebrated 35 years in the business. And, um, but it's still, you know, as I tell the young kids here, you know, it, it uh, you know, it's it, wrestling is a career that it doesn't happen quickly for most people. There's every now and then there's a, you know, that happens, but that's not the norm. And, uh, but so for me, I worked hard for, for nine years before I finally got my break. Uh, and that was, uh, I moved to Atlanta in 1990 was teaching school to ch- and to, 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 to be able to fund my, my dream of being a wrestler full time. And, uh, and wrestled on the weekends, uh, the holidays, summer vacation, whenever I wasn't teaching. But um, I, I befriended Paige uh, pretty early on and, um, and, and we worked out together. We, we were uh, members of Lex and Sting's gym called Main Event Fitness in, in, in Atlanta. And uh, um, and so, you know, I, I, I always say to him, I have one of my, my favorite all-time favorite quote is everybody's heard this phrase you know it's not what you know it's who you know but one of my college coaches told me something that made that even more true and he said it's not what you know it's not who you know it's who's willing to say they know you who's willing to put their name and reputation on the line to hopefully open the door for you and that's what dallas did but it didn't happen overnight i had to really earn dallas's trust and um you know and and his belief in me that uh, that i was ready you know and uh, so eventually january 1996 i i, I met had dinner with Eric Bischoff, um, not knowing what to expect, but I knew me personally, professionally, mentally, physically, emotionally, I, I was ready. I, you know, and, and I had no idea really that, that in that meeting, I would get offered a deal to, to, you know, to what, to look, to what would become me becoming Glacier. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, um, I was there from January, 1996 till pretty much up until the bitter end of April of 01. And so I got to see a lot of the rise and fall of WCW. I, actually, I was there for pretty much all of it. And, uh, but, um, you know, and, 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 and as, du- as Dallas always says too, you know, give me luck, give me skill, give me talent, give me timing. I'll always take timing, you know? <laughs> and so, and uh, so, you know, it, it, I always say that with, um, with WW, you know, in January, 1996, um, based on, you know, Eric's plans uh, with the whole blood runs cold thing and Glacier being the first one to come out uh, in, in January, 1996, it, it was a, it was a great idea. Uh, by the time the summer of 1996, which during that process, everything was being put into place. We were creating all that would become Glacier and Mortis and Wrath and Ernest Miller and all that. But during that time, this this little thing called the NWO happened. And, um, you know, and it changed. Let's face it. Everybody knows it changed the uh, the course of wrestling forever. And uh, and so everything else in, in WCW, and I mean, literally everything took a back seat to that. And uh, but. You know, the, the thing that I look at is because uh, people always say, oh, well, if you were to come out, maybe, you know, Glacier would debut maybe a year earlier or something like that. Sure. Things might have been a little different. But uh, but for me, 
you know, I was I was so fortunate and so thankful to come out, you know, during on Monday Nitro and uh, and have that entrance that I had, which you know I believe still holds up to today, 25, 26 years later. But um, and and I have very very few regrets about my time at WCW and becoming Glacier because over the years what I've learned is sure there's critics. I mean, there's people that that rip me apart out there, and and my thing is like. I'm pretty honored that they spent so much time thinking about everything that in their, their perspective, they think I didn't do well or WCW didn't do well. Cause I'm like, man, that's, you know, they spent a lot of time trying to figure all this stuff out, you know, but, uh, but, you know, I just, I know all the fans that I've touched throughout the world over the years. Um, it, it's been a true honor for me and, and to be, really be a part of arguably one of the very best rosters in, in all time of wrestling during that era. Uh, it's something I'm very, very proud of. I mean, yeah, I mean the guys that you were working with there. I mean, we we spoke to um Alex Wright as well. Yeah, and Alex, oh, Alex, Alex Wright. He he said the similar thing. Like you know, as soon as the NWO came in, it kind of it did everything was like all encompassing ar around that. But we yeah. still think you know that you were able to kind of have a nice little niche there with it going right. on, where you had the yeah. Wrath, the Mortis, and and um Glacier thing going on. Yeah. Um. Also, I wanted to speak to you about um, Chris Canyon because, yeah. you know, you worked directly with him. I'm um, sure you probably spent uh, quite a bit of time with him. Um, yes. Did you see the Dark Side of the Ring episode? Uh, I did. And, uh, and, and Chris, uh, the reason Chris and I, I think, bonded so well and became such great friends, uh, we had, uh, there was a group that, that of people that Paige really helped open the door for. Uh, Chris and I were two of those people, uh, along with, People like Billy Kidman, um, Big Ron Reese, uh, Disco, a lot of the people, you know, Dallas had a big hand in helping us, you know, um, you know, kind of kick that door open, you know, to come into WCW. And, uh, um, you know, we used to we used to call our group the FOP, the Friends of Page, you know. <laughs> and so, but um, but because, you know, Chris and I were at a very similar past when we met, which is in 96, we were both chasing our dream. Uh, we both were were huge, huge fans of wrestling. We loved wrestling. It was our passion. And, you know, I remember that's one of the reasons why we bonded literally like right out of the gate. And, and, and we remained, you know, and became great friends. Um, and, and, you know, you're great friends in the wrestling business when you spend time together outside of your wrestling schedule. And back then it was 200 plus shows a year. You know, we're on the rope usually around 300 days a year. So when you come home a lot, and there were times when we all just went, all right, we're going our separate ways for a few days. We'll catch up when we get back on the road. But but a lot of time we we always we hung out when we were off the road. Um, and and that to me that knowing this business and the way it was with the schedule back then, that was a mark of great friendships. When you you still didn't get tired of each other when you were on the road all the time, and you still wanted to hang out when you were off the road. But um, yeah, he was an amazing amazing friend. He was an awesome awesome guy. Very entertaining guy. Him and Jim Mitchell who. You know, was James Vandenberg, uh, who we always affectionately call Bandy, and I'm still great friends with Bandy. And I live in Orlando; he lives in Kissimmee, um, and so we still stay in touch. But uh, yeah, I, you know, I, I miss him every day. I, I really do. I miss him every day. Uh, my close circle of friends, we have a lot of uh, uh, canyonisms, canyon phrases that we literally say on a daily basis. So we very much keep his memory and his legacy alive as best we can. <laughs> do, do you think they did it tastefully? Then the the dark side of the uh, ring. Do you think it was done well or you know, I, I, I felt like they concentrated a little too much on, um, you know, him coming out and all that, you know, uh, and I think they, you know, there's so much that, that, and I get it. I mean, it's, it's the whole show is designed to show the darker side of stuff, sure. but uh, I, I really wish they would have shown a lot more of what he accomplished in wrestling. You know, uh, and and because because uh, he really, he really did love this business, and and I just felt like the 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 way the episode kind of I just felt like. Yeah, they kind of painted it as almost like right out of the gate. He was this trouble guy. And, and I, me as this friend, I never saw that. And, and I mean, I'm, I'm sure that I know some of the stuff that, that Vandy said I get because, you know, I, I, I had rumblings of that. Cause like I said, we all hung out, but, but then again, like everybody has times when you lose your temper and, and stuff like that. So no one looked at it as anything that was really out of the, out of the ordinary for any of us. Uh, but, um, but yeah, you know, um, dark side of the ring. I mean, you know, uh, Vandy, you know, reached out and told me that they would be getting in touch with me. But uh, officially, I never heard from them. But uh, I can just say personally, uh, I would have uh, respectfully declined just because, you know, I've learned, I learned years ago that reporters, and, and I know it's just their job, but just to put out whatever story they think is going to get the most attention, uh, you know, sell the most newspapers if you're, you know, a 
old guy like me, but uh, but yeah. I mean, you know, they're going to take it out of context. They're going to they're going to word it the way they think it is going to best get attention. And I just, you know, I mean, my my friendship with him is I value it so much. I wasn't about to let someone have that kind of control over what I said about my friend. So I, you know, I'm glad that I wasn't involved in it. And I felt like I feel like you know we all know there's a few episodes where they've done that, you know, with with some other things. And um, mm. but uh, but yeah, I, I but overall, I mean, I think it was um, I think it was you know it seemed pretty uh, you know pretty accurate most of the you know and, and i'm glad that they really centered the whole episode around letting letting bandy jim mitchell tell the story because he knew best he knew the story best he was close to the canyon and um and i think he i think he did a really good job i i i think he did you know canyon's memory did, did his memory good i really do yeah that's good stuff like it's it's, it's good to hear that you know it was uh it wasn't sensationalized in the way that so many other episodes have been like (laughs) so but uh but no yeah i mean you know and and i always say that you know now you know uh, being in the business 35 years and and being very active literally every year of those 35 years i've been able to do a lot of stuff but you know is that canyon um hands down i had the best matches of my career with him we we had a chemistry in the ring that um that you know you just it's a rare thing when you find that and so we just we could go in there and you know as, as we say in the business you know it, it, we could we could tear the house down and and have a great match and and just we we just clicked things just clicked you know and um uh and it was it was so good uh, to have that because you know they put us together a good bit um and I always look forward to when, you know, after we kind of had our initial angle together and we kind of went our separate ways, they would bring us back together every now and then on, on the WCW pro show or Saturday night or whatever. And I, you know, I always loved when I look at the board and I saw that, you know, Chris and I'd have a match together because I knew it was just going to be a good night. It, it was, it was weird because they teased because Chris came in and held up the mask at one point right. in the middle right. of the ring with you. And we yeah. were like, Oh, come on, man. What's going on? What's going to happen? Kind of thing. Yeah. But then um, nothing really no. happened after that. You know, it was. Yeah. Annoying. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Trust me. It was to all of us. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, and that was the thing, of course, you know, a lot of those stories have been uh, have been talked about a lot more now, you know, especially with uh, so many guys having their, their shows and podcasts and things like that. Yeah. But um, yeah, I mean, there were times when, you know, there were a lot of stuff in WCW that was was kind of getting figured out you know, in the moment sometimes even, you know, and, uh, and there would be angles that would start and, um, and all of a sudden they just get dropped. And sometimes with explanation times, sometimes with no explanation, it's just like, no, we're not going that way. We shift the gears. Or we're going another way, you know, and, and, you know, you, you, you plead your case as best you can, but at the end of the day, you know, our job is to, is to go out there and do what we're told to do, you know? And, um, you know, so, and you hope, you know, you hope that back then, obviously we hoped, okay, well, you know, big picture maybe they have something and you you, know, you tried to get as much information as you could you try to I, we always try to be as proactive as we could to kind of offer up suggestions as to what to do because i mean canyon and i realized real quick like like this is our big break and we had to be proactive we had to constantly give them ideas constantly give them suggestions you know as dallas always says be pleasantly persistent you know and stay on the radar of the booking committee you know or now a lot of times what they call the creative team because you know uh, if you just sit back and wait and, and you know, when you're there writing tv and they have all these you know personalities that they have to try to figure out stuff to do i would much rather tell them hey we got enough you know suggestions and ideas appreciate it but you know we're good now rather than i walk down the hall and i pass them i see that look on their face like oh man we're not really sure what we're going to do with you right now <laughs> so, so um so yeah we always especially with me and me and canyon we were very big on throwing as many ideas at them as we could just letting them know hey you know we've got a whole laundry list of stuff we we have come up with if you guys are interested you know now we know you're very um you're pressed for time today so you know yeah you're, you're, but, uh, but the good news like i said is uh, i definitely want to be able to come back you know i only have about half an hour today just because of uh you know the children <laughs> <laughs> so, so talking about that then so you at the moment you're in the nightmare factory working with the guys and girls there right yes in atlanta so, georgia yes um 
we're, I'm going to ask you a question and you can yeah. tell me to piss off if you want to, okay? <laughs> right? No. What's going on with MJF, man? What's happening? You know Give what? us something. I, <laughs> yeah, you, you know what? Uh, here's, here's what, because, uh, you know, partner, you know, be, being here, you know, and, and, and QT is here as much as he can be here. Uh, yeah. Cody is here as much as he can be here. Um, you know, and, and obviously now uh, with Cody, you know, having some forced time off with the injury, um, I, I they both love being here. I, I suspect Cody will be here a little bit more than he would normally be because we know that WWE schedule is is, is a rough schedule. Yeah. Um, but um, but yeah, I mean, uh, I don't know. I really don't know. <laughs> I, I I really I'm at that point now to where you know I always because uh, QT and I have a lot of conversations and it's one of those things where I like you know if there's anything that uh, he feels is is worth telling me, he'll tell me, you know, but I, I don't really go asking too much. Cause I sure. just know that everybody attacks him with that, but you know, um, uh, you know, it, it's, uh, it, it, it makes for, uh, it makes for interesting TV right now. Um, for sure. Yeah. I, I, you know, I just, um, uh, I'm one of those guys that, uh, you know, um, I mean, I, I'm very entertained by, by MGF, MJF, like a lot of people, you know, uh, uh, I felt like personally, just me, um, that, yeah. The, the the tirade that you know that happened a couple of weeks ago was, uh, and I get it because we're in a day and age where profanity and stuff is allowed a little bit more than it used to be. Um, you know, I just I think he's so good that he doesn't need to do that. You know, uh, I would love to see him be able to, you know, cut promos where he doesn't doesn't use as much profanity because I think he's he's that good. You know, but uh, but that's just me. That's that's I me mean, personally. You know, usually I don't think usually MJF really did use. No, that profanity. was that was a little that was a little different. <laughs> yeah, it was because usually he is quite eloquent enough to yeah. kind of sell what he's selling without kind of the yes. swearing. So that's yes. why it was kind of it was it took us back a little bit to say, yeah. wow, yeah. like, you know, man, he must be pissed. Like, you know, yeah. and that's what makes everyone think, you know, the Internet's yeah. on fire with. Is it a sure. work? Was it real? Was it this? Was it that? But, you know. I think on this show, we are huge MJF fans. And obviously, yeah, oh, you worked too. with him in the ring as well. Yeah, um, yeah. When AEW first started up and you were there, yeah. it was, you know, it was great to see you in the ring again. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of his too. I mean, I really, I'm a huge fan of his work because uh, I really, um, I, I'm a big fan of anyone who, um, you know, can, they, they gets in there and um, can do fundamental stuff masterfully well. And I love seeing that. I know we're in an era where there's a lot more high flying. There's a lot more, you know, um, high impact, you know, moves. I get all that, you know, because when my era was, we were just kind of starting to um, ramp that up even more than the, the era before me. So sure. I, I get that things are naturally have, have gone there and, and change is going to occur in anything we do. I get that, but I love watching guys like MJF, Cody, um, CM Punk in the ring, because those guys still, they, they go out there and they do a lot of, fundamental stuff but they do it masterfully well and i love to see that it's great so i mean i'm a little bit disappointed we never got to see see the glacier mjf match that that was key <laughs> Royal, we, we know uh, the funny thing is is that uh, right during that time i uh i had hip replacement surgery on my left hip in december of 2014 and uh right uh, and not long after that that um that you know the pay-per-view then where he and i did the little square off there in the ring at um uh, in the battle royal um my hip was hurting so bad that at that time that um uh, i tried so hard to to not let it show when i was out there and, and i even um i think i we did i did a move where he went try to punch me i, I did kind of like one of my senior things where i spin around gut kick him in and try i tried my leg sweep and it just you know Maybe part of it is the fact that I'm, I'm a senior citizen now, but uh, but the other part is that, you know, my hip hurt so bad after that and, and it hurt trying to do it that I was just like, man, I, I got to finally, I got to get my other hip done because it's just, I just can't go on, you know, with this pain. And so um, not long after that, I got my, uh, my right hip done. And um, so, uh, and it's, uh, it's healed a little bit slower than my other one, but it's coming along. So uh, yeah. And uh, you know, these kids, you know, they're here, they keep me young. And, uh, but once the, um, the other hip gets completely healed, you know, I may, I may have, I still have a little bit of, um, you know, maybe a little bit of the, the entering run left in me here for a little bit long. I'd love to be able to, you know, get in the ring and then, you know, at least I'm 60. That's two more years, you know, so <laughs> we'll see. Um, one thing I wanted to ask as well, just like quickly, you said you yeah. were in WCW till 2001. Did you have any uh, crazy ideas off of Vince Russo? Um, you know, I did. I had a great idea. 
uh, that I pitched to to uh, to Russo and to Ed Ferrara, and at the time they seemed to really like the idea. Uh, it was um, when they were doing the kind of the Team Canada thing with uh, with Eli Skipper and, and Lance Storm was kind of the head of all that and stuff. And um, you know, and, I, and one day I was just standing there, and, I was, and even though I haven't really ever gotten to know Lance well, you know, we 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 worked together for you know a period of time, obviously, but uh, um, and uh, but and obviously I you know I have just mad respect for for him personally and professionally and uh but uh um but i pitched an idea to because i kept looking at you know him and his haircut me and my haircut and i'm thinking you know what i mean age-wise I'm, I, I think i'm maybe you know a few years older than him and uh I, and i pitched an idea to him to where maybe you know team lance and i up as and, and and let it come out that i was and i'm actually his older brother you know, and then I would cut my hair maybe a little tighter, you know, a little bit more like Lance's and, and then, you know, maybe become a part of, you know, the Team Canada thing or whatever, you know. Um, you know, and I remember we had the meeting and they seemed to really love the idea. But uh, like so many things that, that Vince Russo and, and Ed did back then, you know, it just it kind of came and went. <laughs> like a lot of other, nothing really got done. So. <laughs> so whose idea was Buzz Stern? Uh, that was mine. That yeah. was mine. And, uh, and, and the reason why, once again, being proactive, um, I saw the writing on the wall that the, uh, the new booking committee that had come in, uh, they just, they, I could, there were some uh, old school guys on that and, and that, that were not a fan necessarily of, I don't think it was any personal gets me just the gimmick itself, the glacier gimmick. I, I don't, I didn't, I just could see the writing on the wall that they weren't going to do much with that. And and so my three-year contract was coming up. And uh, so I had seen what happened to most guys. It was like, Hey, you know, thanks. You know, we're going to part ways. So yeah. I actually hired a good friend of mine to come up from Miami, a director, my buddy Luther, Luther Biggs and I, and, uh, and we um, paid out of pocket. We shot, uh, I think, probably shot several videos and we ended up, I think, with seven or eight that got professionally edited and literally ready for TV. And um, and so when I got the call that uh, that looks like they were not going to renew my contract, I I, asked, I got a meeting with Eric and I went and I, I had it on a, uh, I think it was a VHS event, even still then. <laughs> Cause wow. I, I remember he had, it was either, yeah, I think it was VHS still. But anyway, I knew he had, you know, a, a TV and a, and a player in his office there. So anyway, he threw it in and he watched it. Um, he, he really liked it. And uh, I think he really appreciated how proactive I was to come up with something and take all those steps to say, Hey, look, you know, I, I you know, uh, if you're not going to do that, then how about this? And for me, that was a very, very fun, very easy gimmick for me to do because I'd been a teacher and a coach and I'd had coaches throughout my athletic career. So I just combined some of these really crazy personalities together to, to make this persona. And, um, and, and it was a lot of fun it, and, and it got more of a Saturday night TV run, but, uh, but, you know, we had a lot of fun with it. And, um, uh, and, and I really, honestly, I mean, uh, the, I, other than working with, you know, one of my best buddies in the whole world, still Luther Biggs, um, uh, my one match I had as Coach Buzz Stern, I had with Eddie, Eddie Guerrero. Yeah, that's and right. So, um, yeah. So, and, uh, and, and that was, yeah, I obviously was, was just, you know, uh, you know, uh, icing on the cake for, for, you know, my, my whole run at WCW because uh, I'd gotten to know Eddie really well. And, and, uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, it was, uh, it was fun. You know, it was really fun. And then once again, Changing of the guard happened again, and all of a sudden they weren't a fan of it. They pulled yeah. us right off TV. <laughs> so and then they, and then Terry Taylor, who's helped me immensely throughout my career, um, suggested that we bring Glacier back. But where I'm, I, I believe now that I really am kind of like a superhero, and and I was more cocky. And we did the thing with um, with Norman Smiley, which yeah, uh, anybody who knows anything about Norman Smiley, one of the one of the greatest guys in or out of wrestling I've ever known. And um, and I had a lot of fun, even though it was short lived. I'm amazed at how many people still remember that when I talk to them about my WCW run. Yeah, I remember you was in the crowd talking to the crowd rather than oh, yeah. in his back. Yeah. You know, it was yeah, great. Yeah. Like, it was um, awesome. It was fun. So the new guys there. One more yeah. question: Are yeah. they are they aligned with the three S's? That's what I need to know. You know what? Uh, I have not I have not presented the three S's to them. So that's a good <laughs> thing to do today when I go out there. Yeah, yeah so, do it, please. Sweat do. plus sacrifice equals success. That's right, you know? man. Yeah. I need your need your eyes and ears open and your mouth shut. That's right. There's, yeah. there's two two types of people in the world: either you're an athlete or an athletic supporter. 
but thank you, man. That's what I, I wanted to get that out of you, and I didn't even have to prompt you. It's just amazing. Thank you, man. Thank you. Oh, my pleasure, my pleasure. But uh, but yeah, um, you know, I, I I this is like I was telling these guys. You know, I live in Orlando. I come up here um, as often as I can to twelve week camps because it, you know, I don't have to. It means, a, but it means a lot to me. Um, I was so fortunate to learn from some of the greatest in the history of this business. Most people know my relationship with Dusty and and the fact that Dusty was my childhood hero. Uh, and it's a very special thing to me to be um, uh, be connected with Cody now because knowing Cody since he was was really young. And um, but you know, having the chance to get it to to become friends the last 10 years of, of, of his life with Luthez and learn from someone that's literally one of the greatest names in the history of our business, you know, and uh, along with Dusty. I mean, these guys are iconic names in our business. And and they and between the two of them, you know, they're, they're um, the lineage of, you know, Dusty had his era and really Lou came before Dusty. So I had the benefit of learning from from two of the very, very best and most iconic names in this industry among many others you know and yeah. so um it's just you know i feel a moral obligation a deep deep obligation to pass along to the next generation what i was so fortunate to learn and, and i always remind those those guys and girls out there that everything i'm teaching you most of, i didn't most of it i didn't come up with I, I just i learned it from someone who who knew a whole lot more than me and i was smart enough to listen and apply what they taught me and this is this is at this point in my life it's my my like I said, my moral obligation to pass it along to the next generation. Hopefully they listen and hopefully they apply it and hopefully they uh you know they uh they, they make me look pretty good out there one of these days. <laughs> <laughs> hope they make me proud. And so far the ones that have come through the camp have they have. We have got we've got some great groups that have come through. Amazing. Are you um are you pretty close uh, in the training of Anthony Agogo? Yes, I, I, I love Anthony. I mean, he is, uh, I use Anthony as a great example um, that when he comes in to, to train, because uh, one of my, my things I always say, especially with our advanced group that trains it later in the evenings, I tell them like, you have to put yourself mentally in front of an audience when you're in here, because it's really hard. There's no audience to play off of. So you have to you have to, to to mentally imagine that and play off of that. That way, you're at, you're you know you're at your best performance. You're not just going through the motions in the ring, you know, as your as your whatever your gimmick is, and just your the way you're doing the moves. When when a go go comes in, he is so good at being Anthony a go go exactly like you see him on TV in front of the audience. He is exactly that in the ring here at the school, and he commands your attention. Because uh, we have other athletes that are working out in, in kind of other areas of the this is a thirty five thousand square foot facility, and everybody stops and watches his his matches when he does a match here, because he commands your attention. I mean, he makes you watch him, and not not by like screaming so loud you you know you can't ignore him. It's just like the way he moves, the way he he acts, he's his level of confidence. Um, his just his charisma. I mean, he it not only but I, but I say, a better way to say it is he makes you want to watch him. He really does. He, he commands your attention. He makes you want to stop and watch what he's doing. And I tell everybody else, use I use a go-go as an example every time. Like, you remember last time Anthony was here? You see how he did it? That's what I need you to do. I need you to be like that. I need you to project like that. Because those are the people that draw money in our business. You know, and that's at the end of the day, that's what our business is. It's, you know, they call it show business for a reason, not show hobby. You know, so yeah. <laughs> But yeah, I, I love Anthony. I, I I I really respect his commitment to this. I mean, um, you know, to to be you know a former Olympian, uh, and he had his you know his lifelong dream to be a boxer, and and, and obviously that was cut short with his with his eye injury and and everything. But to be able to transition and 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 you know come into this, and this is not easy to do by any stretch. Being a professional wrestler, especially today, is not easy at all to do. It's very, very hard, man. And, and he, he took to it like a duck to water. He really did from, from the time I've known him. And, um, and, and he's just, uh, he's very comfortable. Um, as, uh, you know, as I heard the undertaker, you know, quoted, I, I read online just recently where he said, you know, you, you don't play the wrestler, you, you be the wrestler, you know, and, and Anthony Gogo, when he's in the ring, he is the wrestler. He is the, Anthony Gogo, the wrestler, you know, the governor. You know, and so and um, you have no trouble believing that because he projects so confidently that he is that. And so you have no problem buying into that's who this person is, you know, and he's very, very entertaining, very watchable, um, you know, and uh, uh, and he's very, as I say, he's very relatable. You know, people, the fans can relate to him. Uh, and when you're relatable, you're memorable. And, uh, and and, you know, and if you can also be imitatable, if people can imitate what you do, you got a really good chance of, of having a good career in this business. 
Uh, we we love a bit of Anthony a go go on this show, you know. Yeah, we, he's um, awesome. We we think he's. I mean, what a great heel faction him and MJF would be together. I mean, it, I think that'd be incredible. Yeah, very good point. Very good point. So uh, I'm sure they've thought about that too. But uh, maybe I, I'll make sure to put that bug in QT's yeah, here. I'm, I'm hoping to see him tomorrow. So <laughs> amazing, no, amazing. Yeah. Right. Um, Thank you so much for giving us the time you've given us. Oh, yeah, guys. And like I said, I'd love to come back home because, you know, we didn't get any chance really to talk about the uh, the film project yet. Uh, before, no, we haven't. So, uh, That's yeah. what, yeah. So, uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, maybe whenever you guys, uh, um, uh, we, 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 maybe we can come back home whenever works for you guys and maybe we can kind of devote maybe a, a, an episode to just talking about the film project. But just for everybody who, who's wanted to know, uh, I've been working for the last few years kind of quietly on this great ensemble cast film it's an action adventure sci-fi film uh with an ensemble cast of legendary professional wrestlers several hall of fame wrestlers uh from diamond dallas page king haku stan hansen gangrel on down and uh um and myself ernest miller and and along and along and along but uh you can you can uh, to, to just find out some you know information about the movie um our facebook page right now is uh is just unbreakable bunch movie right now and then uh you can look up on our website uh which is done by um robert mclaren who is who's dallas's it guy for the, all of his ddp yoga um is uh, unbreakablebunch.com and uh and and that we're getting ready to really ramp up the um the uh the publicity for everything and hopefully create some really good buzz and just the short end of the story is that we're in post-production right now we really hope to be able to get a theatrical release sometime maybe around february of next year so uh maybe when i come back on i'll go into detail about all of that amazing and i'll tell you what if if it gets a release in the uk in any cinemas myself and jb will be there mic in hand interviewing people and just ramping up for you oh well thank you well just and and honestly guys uh that's one of the things we're we're going over right now is you know who we're going to go with for distribution because we know we've got to have someone who has strong ties to international distribution because the wrestling world internationally is, is, is a huge, huge, huge part of our audience, you know, and uh, which is why we're here doing what we're doing today, you know, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, just real quick. I mean, I, I just wanted to, to just to kind of give everybody an idea of what this movie is. There's been a lot of moves over the years made about professional wrestling. Most of them fall into two categories, a really campy comedy, you know, which is kind of like ready to rumble uh, or they show the darker side of our business, kind of like the wrestler. You know, sure. and um, and I know there's, you know, obviously those stories are relatable stories to our business, but uh, we decided to make a movie that we felt like probably would never get told unless we decided to tell the story. And, it, and it's a part of what's really great about the pro wrestling business. And it's a movie that celebrates everything that's good about pro wrestling, especially how great the fans are of pro wrestling. And there's a lot of wrestling in the movie, but there's also a lot of action. Um, I mean, it's a it's a like I said, it's an action sci fi film. So we end up battling aliens at one point in the movie if you can imagine that and there's gunfire <laughs> and explosions a lot of kicking and punching but at the end of the day a lot of really good pro wrestling in the movie too so it's gets a very family friendly fun movie that we wanted the whole family to be able to enjoy to watch <coughs> Excuse me. even the idea of um seeing you uh, <coughs> with an alien in the ice pick would be yes, uh, incredible yes. <laughs> <laughs> and king haku just wading through some aliens i mean you can yeah, imagine man. how how fun that's gonna be <laughs> incredible incredible <laughs> Well, guys, thank you so much. I appreciate you having me on. But yes, yeah, so let's definitely let's definitely do this again soon. Sure. Thank, thank, thank you, you so Ray. Much. We really, really appreciate really it. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thank um, you, guys. Thank you. Yeah. See you soon. Cheers, buddy. Thanks. Well, there you have it. Thank you so much to Ray, aka Glacier, WCW legend, for jumping on with us. However quick it was. Bloody it, nice bloke. Yeah, I'm so cool. So much fun. He was. Man, he was really into it as well. He really, really enjoyed. He enjoys being a trainer. He's loving wrestling life. He's so passionate about what he does, and we're really thankful for him to come in on. Man, I tried to get some MJF info out of him, dude. I tried, man. I fucking tried. But a tight lip, Lloyd. Lloyd, he's just he's, he's no. He's like, I don't know nothing. <laughs> Fair play to him. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's been it's been a wonderful chat, and he's yeah, we we're super grateful for any time he's given us here. Incredible. I mean, he's been in the, the business so many years, and the, the the thing with with Ray is like, you know, if you think about the time he was actually in WCW, I mean, it wasn't really that long, but he made a great impression. He was great in the ring. He was doing innovative stuff for that time. Um, you know, it was just unfortunate the that kick beat super kick all day long. Oh man, and I even remember he actually wrestled Chris Adams, the guy that you know, 
did who was the first guy to really do the kind of karate kicks and stuff um you know in, in wcw so that that was cool man it's like but it's we love meeting these guys that we watched when we were growing up and ray's just a really nice guy he's giving back to the re- wrestling community you know the fact that he works with anthony agogo he's there in the nightmare factory he's still giving back man it's just great great to see so let's get to the important stuff it's about time you slap that bell. It's about time you've subscribed, given us your love, because we are very close to one of our goals. Dude, my my bell is tingling from the amount of times it has been slapped in the last couple of weeks. So just I'm teetering on the edge. Yeah. So just slap that bell a few more times and God knows what will happen when we hit that magical number of 1,000. Let's absolutely say it. We're not guys that are digging up any sort of Patreon or OnlyFans or any sort of bullshit that, you know, you might see on other sites. Or well, other. we might have an OnlyFans coming soon, no? Well. You yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Having some sunny days. Yeah, oh, dude, it's fucking crazy, man. <laughs> let's let's keep with it. No <laughs> Patreon. We don't want your money. No. We've already, always said that. We've always said that from the beginning. We've never From day won- one. You know, we want YouTube's money. We don't want your money. We want YouTube's money. Slap the fucking bell. Get us to a thousand subscribers. Our view count is getting up there. Then we can monetize the channel. And then all you got to do is fucking click skip ad. That's all you got to do. We don't want your dollar. You know what I mean? We want YouTube's money. And then we can buy pretty figures to put behind us. We can buy ourselves maybe a hot dog when we go to Cardiff. Um, We can buy Cactus Matt a fucking drink. Um, you know, we, we can go out and do more wrestling stuff. Absolutely right. So with that, we thank you for sticking around. We thank you for listening to this interview. We thank you for to anyone that has hit that bell, that bell slapped it around, given us a little tug. Oh, thank you so much. Loved it. I've been JB. As always, the best Chris in all the wrestling podcast, Chris Dredd. He's bang, who bang. Thank you so much for sticking around. We will see you soon. Take care, everyone.